Hey guys, this is Palak Sanghai and welcome to my brand new YouTube channel, The Medical Maniac. I am a second year MBBS student and intending to help out my first year friends with their MBBS journey. Also, the ones in second year can revise their first year with me, as this lockdown is a great time to do so, right? So, I hope you all enjoy this journey with me and support me throughout. We are going to commence with neuroanatomy videos and the first one being the development of nervous system. So, let's start it. Okay, so starting with the development of nervous system. As we all know, there are three germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm and the endoderm. So, whole of our nervous system, it is derived from ectoderm, except its blood vessels and some of the neuroglial elements like the microglia. This microglia, it is derived from the mesoderm. Now, the part of ectoderm giving rise to entire nervous system, it is known as neural ectoderm. This neural ectoderm differentiates further into three parts, the neural tube, the neural crest cells and the ectodermal placards. The neural tube gives rise to the central nervous system, the neural crest cells gives rise to most of the peripheral nervous system and the ectodermal placards gives rise to cranial sensory ganglia, hypophysis and the inner ear. Now coming to neural tube formation first. Okay, so in this diagram, as we can see, this is the ectoderm, this blank part is the mesoderm, and this is the endoderm. This dot, this is not a cord. So, at the 16th day of the embryonic life, ectoderm overlying the notochord thickens in the midline. This is the notochord, this, this is the ectoderm overlying it. So it thickens in the midline to form the neural plate. Here is the neural plate. Now, the somatic mesoderm on either side of the notochord develops. This is the mesoderm on either side of the notochord. This develops and the margins of the neural plate elevates as the neural folds. So when this mesoderm will develop, it will push the margins of the neural plate. So they will lift up to form the neural folds. These folds are the neural folds. Now the center of the neural plate sinks to form the neural groove. This has sunken. This is known as neural groove. Now the neural fold gradually move towards the midline and fuse and lose its connection with the surface ectoderm forming the neural tube. Here you can see the neural fold comes in the midline and this neural tube, it loses its connection from the surface ectoderm. So here is the formation of neural tube. Now you may wonder what are these circles? So that we will discuss in the next part. Okay, so we have completed with the neural tube formation. Now second, the formation of neural crest cells. The cells at the tip of neural fold breaks away to form the neural crest cells. So these were the neural folds. So the cells here at the tip breaks away to form the neural crest cells which does not participate in the neural tube formation. Here we can see this is the neural tube and these are the neural crest cells. So the neural crest cells have not participated in the neural tube formation. Okay, the neural crest cells differentiates into following seven things. First, the cells of dorsal root ganglion. Second, the sensory ganglia of the cranial nerves. Third, the autonomic ganglia. Then the adrenal medulla, chromaffin tissue, melanocytes and Schwann cells. You need not learn all this, but this is just for your information, these seven parts. So next and the last part is the formation of ectodermal placards. Before the neural tube closure, neural fold has the neural crest cells and the neuroepithelial cells. Means these neural folds not only has the neural crest cells, but also the neuroepithelial cells. So the neural crest cells which gets det detached after the neurulation. 
so when there is neural tube formation these neural crest cells gets detached and the neuroepithelial cells which after neurulation becomes incorporated within the surface ectoderm here is the surface ectoderm in which the neuroepithelial cells get incorporated and are called ectodermal placards next we will jump to the development of spinal cord the spinal cord develops from the caudal elongated part of the neural tube we have studied neural tube so the caudal elongated part of neural tube gives rise to the spinal cord by the fifth week the transverse section shows three zones from inside to outside so the inner one is matrix the middle one is the mantle and the outer one is the marginal zone so the matrix zone after mitosis gives rise to the neuroblast and the spongioblast this neuroblast gives rise to the neurons these neurons migrate to the mantle zone the spongioblast gives rise to the neuroglial cells these neuroglial cells are the supporting cells the mantle zone gives rise to the cell bodies of the neurons that will form the gray matter of the spinal cord the marginal zone gives rise to the nerve fibers or axons the white matter which is white in color due to the myelination of the nerve fibers so here is the transverse section of the developing spinal cord here in the spinal cord this part is the dorsal root this is the ventral root this is the dorsal root ganglion this central portion is called the central canal these two dorsal portions are called the lr lamina or the dorsal lamina these two ventral portions are known as basal lamina or the ventral lamina the lr or the dorsal lamina has the afferent portion and the basal or the ventral lamina has the efferent portion now these four red circles what are they the first one is known as gsa that is general somatic afferent column the second one here is known as gva column that is general visceral afferent column this one here this is gve that is general visceral efferent column and the fourth one here is gse the general somatic efferent column always remember the upper two are the afferent columns and the lower two are efferent columns the inner ones are the visceral columns the outer ones are the somatic columns now the dorsal roots and the ventral roots mix up here in the red part and these form a single spinal nerve so yeah this was all about the transfer section of the developing spinal cord talking about the afferent columns of the lr lamina the first one is gsa and the second one is gva about gsa that is general somatic afferent it receives the impulse from the superficial and the deep receptors the superficial are the cutaneous and the deep are the proprioceptive proprioceptive means the one which help us to sense about the position and movement of our body the next one is the gva the general visceral afferent column it receives impulse from the viscera and the blood vessels that is the deeper organs talking about the efferent columns of the basal lamina the first one is the gve efferent the general visceral efferent column it provides the preganglionic fibers to the viscera glands and the blood vessels and the gse or the general somatic efferent column it innervates the skeletal muscles 
Now the last part of our discussion is the development of brain. The brain develops from the enlarged cranial part of the neural tube. We studied about the spinal cord. It used to develop from the caudal part of the neural tube. So our brain develops from the cranial part of the neural tube. At the end of fourth week, it shows three distinct dilations that are the primary brain cycles. From cranial to caudal end, from here to here, there are prosencephalon, mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon. This one here is the prosencephalon, this is the mesencephalon and here is the rhombencephalon. The, pros the prosencephalon is the forebrain, mesencephalon is the midbrain and the rhombencephalon is the hindbrain. Now, during the fifth week, the prosencephalon and the rhombencephalon subdivides into two vesicles. This is the prosencephalon and this is the rhombencephalon. These two subdivides into two vesicles each. So now total, there are five secondary brain vesicles. The first one is the prosencephalon, which divides into two, the telencephalon rostrally and the diencephalon caudally. The telencephalon forms the cerebral hemispheres, the diencephalon forms the thalamus, metathalamus, hypothalamus, subthalamus and the epithalamus. The mesencephalon does not divide, that is the midbrain. The rhombencephalon divides into the metencephalon and the myelencephalon. The metencephalon develops into the pons and cerebellum. The myelencephalon develops into the medulla oblongata. To be precise, this is the prosencephalon, mesencephalon and the rhombencephalon. The prosencephalon divides into telencephalon and diencephalon. This is the mesencephalon or the midbrain which does not divide. Now the rhombencephalon divides into metencephalon and myelencephalon. After further development, this telencephalon it surrounds the diencephalon from all the sides. So, this is the telencephalon, this is the diencephalon, mesencephalon, metencephalon, and the myelencephalon. Now, last, development of the ventricular system of the brain. What are basically ventricles? Ventricles are the cavities within the brain substance. So, here in this diagram, the blue part, the green, the pink part is the brain substance. But the white part is the cavity of the brain, which are simply known as ventricles. And these are filled with the cerebrospinal fluids. So, the telencephalic cavity, these two, are called the lateral ventricles. The diencephalic cavity, this one here, is the third ventricle. The mesencephalic cavity, this one, converts into tube known as cerebral aqueduct or the aqueduct of sylvius and this cavity here is the hindbrain cavity known as the fourth ventricle so these are the lateral ventricles this here is the third ventricle this is this is the cerebral aqueduct the fourth ventricle this was it for the video i know this topic was more informative than conceptual Watch each upcoming topics of neuroanatomy and I promise to clear 70 to 75 percent of concepts of neuro, which I think is great, right? So yeah, keep watching and more interesting conceptual videos are on its way. Thank you.